about 26% humidity, not too bad as well. And we're sitting at about 70 degrees. If you guys are going to do anything outside this evening, this evening is definitely the night to do it because you won't have many more chances as we come on and see. Uh, later this week, we're going to have a big winter storm moving in that's going to start on Tuesday and last up until the weekend. Uh, we're going to have snow and ice danger as well. So whenever you're out driving, make sure you're careful for, at that. And we're also going to have freezing temps going into the weekend. So it's going to be a cold, cold week. Guys, back to you at the desk. With freezing rain in the forecast across Oklahoma, here are a few important reminders from the National Weather Service to keep you safe. Before the storm strikes, make sure your home, office, and vehicles are stocked with the supplies you need. Make sure pets also have the essentials that they will need during a winter storm. Finally, know how to dress for varying degrees of cold weather. You can find more important information on the National Weather Service website. Thank you. And an earthquake centered near the city of Medford had a magnitude of 4.5 today, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The quake happened shortly after 11 a.m. and could be felt across Edmond. Many of thousands of quakes in Oklahoma in recent years have been linked to the underground injection of wastewater from oil and natural gas extraction. And speaking of the earthquake, U Central's Brady Gray asked students if they felt the effects of the quakes. Here's what he found. Did you feel it? Many people on campus did. According to the United States Geological Survey, at 11.10 a.m., a, a 4.5 magnitude earthquake occurred near Medford, Oklahoma, in the northern part of the state. The tremor could be felt as far south as Norman. Residents from Medford, Oklahoma, have reported it as high as a 6 out of 10, while residents in Edmond have reported it as high as 4 out of 10. Some students even felt it during class. Uh, basically, I went to my business class. I sat down and was getting my notebook out, my laptop, and all of a sudden the projector, there's, it almost sounded like someone fell on the top floor, and our projector was just bouncing up and down. People in student housing felt it as well. Well, me and my roommate were just sitting there, and she was like, did you feel that? And I was like, yeah, but I just thought it was like people working on the roof or something, because it was rumbling. We were in our dorm, second floor, so I didn't know it was an earthquake, though. If you're caught on campus during an earthquake, university guidelines say do your best to get outside, cover your head, and stay safe. If you're inside during a tremor, find somewhere to take cover underneath a table or even in a doorway. Reporting from Edmond, Oklahoma, Brady Gray, U Central News. Thanks, Brady, and we will keep you posted if more news develops following the earthquake. That's right, thank you. Let's take a look at UCO's COVID numbers for today. University of Oklahoma is currently at level two operations and is facing 215 active cases. Currently, there has been over 1,800 recoveries since the beginning of the last semester. And as for Oklahoma COVID numbers, the state of Oklahoma currently has 4,800 new cases. Oklahoma has over 102,000 active cases. There are 375 total ICU hospitalizations right now. The Oklahoma State Department of Health as well as the Oklahoma City and County Health Department are moving away from the universal case investigation and contact tracing. Instead, the health organizations are focusing on a more strategic approach of outbreak investigations, including targeted case investigations. The focus now is on prioritizing outbreaks and clusters of cases as well as high risk settings. Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine has been granted full approval by the U.S. health regulators today. They were given emergency authorization over a year ago. Gaining full approval by the FDA means the agency completed their review of the shot just as they did with several other established vaccines since December of 2020. More than 200 million doses have been administered in the U.S. Pfizer's vaccine was granted full approval last August. And with COVID still a serious concern for UCO, temporary protocols are in effect, giving, full, giving students and faculty quite a bit to think about. In light of the rising number of cases in Oklahoma, as well as the appearance of the Omicron variant, the University of Central Oklahoma has enacted phase two policies as of now until February 6th. This means that students who choose to attend class in person must wear a mask on the premises, and then students also have the opportunity to attend virtually 
via the platform of the professor's choosing. The teachers and other faculty members are concerned overall for the welfare and well-being of the students here at the university, with many believing that this is the right decision moving on. I think it is a good thing. I think that there is still a surge in COVID on campus as well as Edmond and Oklahoma City. Um, so I think it is the proper and right decision at this time. I think it would be proper to keep level uh, two protocols until it shows that cases are going down um, because you don't want to do a rebound and we go back to level one and then cases rise again and we have to go back to it. If we're going to be in this phase, I'd rather we just stay here until it is safe to go back and we stay at level one. Students seem to like the precautions and protocols put into effect by the University of Central Oklahoma as it gives the students a variety of ways in which which they can learn, but it also provides a variety of ways in which they can now feel safe in the process, saying that this was about as good as the university could really do. Uh, I actually stand behind it. I think it's a pretty responsible move by the school for a few reasons. One, I think masking is probably the best option that they have right now, especially to cut down on just the amount of uh, what's the word, contagion, and cutting down on how many people are actually being infected. But at the same time, stuff like uh, virtual options are, of course, a good alternative because it's a commuter school. So people who are super far away, even in situations like we're going to see later this week with the snowstorm, people aren't necessarily even going to have to come to class because we have those virtual options that we've prepared over the years. We've no word yet saying whether or not that the phase two protocols will stay into effect after the February 6th deadline. But what can be assured is that the university will do its best to make sure that the staff and students are taken care of. Reporting from the University of Central Oklahoma, I'm Jackson Robottom, U Central News. Thank you, Jackson, and we will keep you updated as more information becomes available to us. Now for an update on the situation in Ukraine. Today, Russia accused the West of whipping up tensions over Ukraine. The UN held a debate today on the buildup in Moscow. U.S. Ambassador Linda Thompson-Greenfield shot back that Russia's growing military force was the largest mobilization in Europe in decades. The the Oklahoma A-plus Schools Institute has implemented a project at UCO. The Institute has received a $145,000 grant from Boeing, the world's largest aerospace company. This grant will continue to help fund Oklahoma A-plus schools throughout the semester. UCO President Patty Newhold Rav Ravkumar was recognized as one of the top college presidents who are leading the advancement of social mobility in the U.S. UCO has, had, UCO has been recognized nationally for the ways it helps strengthen economic mobility for its students. And in, what, and in weather terms, it was pretty warm today, wouldn't you say, Patrick? Yeah, for sure. The weather has been nice today, but will it stick around? We will be back with weather right after the break. using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Well, yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play.
Welcome back, and well, today has been a beautiful day on campus today, Jackson. You are absolutely right, but unfortunately, we also know that weather is not going to last, and we're going to check in with CJ to talk about this winter weather. CJ, tell us what's going on out there. Well, that's right, guys. It has been a beautiful day across the entire state of Oklahoma as we go ahead and take a look at the conditions here, sitting about metro area, 70s all across the state, 68 here in Woodward, 70, 67 in Clinton. But as we start to move into the week, drop as that Arctic air starts to move into the state, and we're going to go ahead and take in about 10 to 15 miles per hour. There could be some gusts tonight, but I wouldn't count on it. Sitting at about 50% humidity, and we're not going to start to see that rain chance come in until tomorrow and further into the week. Let's go ahead and take a look at tonight around the state, uh, sitting at about 51 here in the metro area, 29 up there in Guymon, as you can see in the north, as that starts to slowly move in. We're not going to see too, too much uh, coldness tomorrow. However, we are going to see a huge spike going into a few days. Take a look at tomorrow's forecast. Uh, as you can see, up in the north, lower temperatures than normal, but still not too, too cold. Guymon sitting at about 45 degrees. The metro sitting at about 58. Uh, down in the south part of the state, Bell and Ardmore, uh, but as we go along, we're going to go to the Edmond area, sitting about 50 skies at 7 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, and then we're going to go into noon where it's going to get a little bit windy, but not too, too bad, sitting about 54 degrees, and as we start to head into the evening tomorrow, that's when we're going to start to see the temperatures drop, sitting about 51 degrees tomorrow. Let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast. Uh, sitting at about 72 degrees today. As you can see, going into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, that temperature is going to start to abruptly drop. As you can see here on Tuesday, today we're going to have a little bit of mix of sleet and snow. Uh, however, on Thursday, we are going to move into that snow chance. Uh, and as we move throughout the week, we're not going to start the temperatures blow up until this weekend. Guys, it's right here for weather. Patrick with you Central Social Media. supposed to save the whole world. You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Yeah, mic check, mic check. How we doing? Hello. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Yeah, I, I'm good. I'm good. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. I have graphics Dad, loaded in to the rundown. Dad, do stars visit their friends? But no. if they're not ready, don't worry about them. If they're not ready, don't worry about them. I'm ready. Hello, I'm Patrick Talbot with your U Central Social Media Update, and we start today's update with the news that Rihanna and rapper ASAP Rocky are expecting. The Grammy-winning power couple are expected, expecting their first child today. People Magazine reported that the 33-year-old debuted her baby bump in New York City over the weekend. Rihanna and ASAP Rocky reportedly started dating in November of 2020 after years of friendship. In March of 2020, Rihanna told British Vogue that she saw herself having three or four children in the next 10 years. 
and the two-time Grammy Award winning Halsey has announced her tour for this summer. There are 22 dates on the scheduled tour so far with stops in Florida, New York, California, and the closest show to Oklahoma is on June 28th in Dallas, Texas. All shows are expected to be at outdoor events. And Netflix released a trailer for its new movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After nearly 50 years of hiding, Leatherface returns to terrorize a group of idealistic young friends who accidentally disrupt his careful, carefully shielded world in a remote Texas town. The, the movie is set to release exclusively on Netflix on February 18th. Finally, tomorrow is the start of Lunar New Year and 2022 is the year of the tiger. Lunar New Year is an important celebration for many people around the world, especially those in East and Southeast Asia. Whereas the Gregorian calendar celebrates the new year on one day, the Lunar New Year is a celebration of numerous days. Well, that is all I have for you today. Make sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss out on anything U Central News. Give us a follow on Twitter at U Central Media and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash U Central. And Aaron will have updates on UCO basketball and wrestling coming up after the break for UCO Sports. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. One, two, check, Sometimes check. the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, <laughs> excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Bronco fans, I'm Aaron Galvin and this is your Monday Sports Update. The UCO men's basketball team had been on a roll, winning 13 games in a row before they took on Washburn on Saturday. The ninth ranked Broncos fell 96 to 86 as Isaiah Wade scored 28 points to lead all players in scoring. Washburn won in a 9-0 run early in the game and led by as many as 15 points. UCO cut into the lead but was never able to fully recover. Central fell to 17-3 on the year and will return home this weekend to take on Nebraska Kearney and Fort Hayes State. The UCO women's basketball team dropped a high-scoring overtime battle on Saturday as they lost to Washburn by a score of 98-93. Kelsey Johnson led the way with a double-double of 23 points and 14 rebounds. She also added 7 assists. Brooke Rayner posted 6 steals and chipped in 18 points. The Broncos fell to 12 and 9 on the season and will now enjoy a week at home as they host Nebraska Kearney and Fort Hayes State coming up this week. And the UCO wrestling team defeated Central Missouri yesterday afternoon and it wasn't a particularly close match. The Broncos won 38 to 6 at the Hamilton Fieldhouse and UCO got pins from Paxton Rosen, Dalton Abner and Sean Streck while also getting major decisions from Stud Morris and Heath Gray. 
UCO will hit the road next weekend when they take on Fort Hayes State and Nebraska Kearney. And we finally know the two teams that will be taking part in Super Bowl 56, which will, which will be played in Los Angeles on February 13th. The Cincinnati Bengals took down the Kansas City Chiefs 27-24 in overtime as the Cincy defense contained Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes in the second half, leading to a walk-off field goal. And the Los Angeles Rams were victorious over the rival San Francisco 49ers by a score of 20-17 as Matthew Stafford led the way exactly one year after being traded to the Rams from the Detroit Lions. Los Angeles becomes the second team in a row to play, the, play in a Super Bowl in their own building after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did so last year. And that's everything I have for sports today. For more news, scores, and updates on everything UCO athletics, visit broncosports.com. Have a great day, Edmund, and we'll take it back to Jackson and Patrick at the desk. Thanks, Aaron. After this, we'll have one last look at the weather. Stay tuned, Broncos. using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. The Oklahoma City Convention Center is currently the home of a piece of artwork created by Flaming Lips frontman Wayne Coyne and the artist Damian Hurst. Coyne loaned the artwork to the city for 10 years and is located on the fourth floor of the Convention Center. The painting is appraised at over $1.5 million. Be sure to check out that new, that new art piece downtown. That's a pretty impressive art piece when you think about it. it is. But uh, let's check with CJ one more time to see what we have coming up this week for weather. Thank you, you guys. It is going to be a cold, cold, cold week coming up as we can look here at our seven day forecast. It's not so bad sitting at about 72 degrees, but as we start to move into tomorrow, and Wednesday, we're going to start to see that rain chance start to slowly creep its way in. Tuesday, we're going to worry, be worrying about mostly rain. We don't have to worry about the snow. That's going to come in on Wednesday. It's going to be a mix of sleet and snow and ice, and it's just going to be a bad day overall. And as we move into Thursday, we're also going to have that chance for more snow flurries as the temperature starts to decrease. And so let's take a look at these temperatures right here. 18 degrees is the high on Thursday, 8 degrees low on Friday night. Guys, if you're going to be outside, go ahead and bump up, make sure your taps are running so you don't freeze your pipes. Make sure you take all your precautions necessary because we are going to have multiple days below freezing. Guys, that's all I have for weather. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, CJ. Uh, Jackson, what are you planning to do for all this cold uh, weather and in, in preparation? I'm planning on staying inside as, as much as possible. I don't think I have clothes warm enough to be out in that 
Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't raised in the Arctic, so mm -hmm. this yeah. is this is not ideal weather for me, no, to say for the least, sure. yourself. For sure it's not. Uh, you know, I actually got out and played some golf last weekend, but oh, good uh, man. That's, that's, that's out of the uh, question this week. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Patrick Talbot. And I'm Jackson Robottom. Thanks for joining us. Tune in tomorrow, same time, for U Central News. Have a good night, guys.